Hello and welcome to Credit Matters TV. My name is Rob Rogel and I work in the Structured Credit Group at Standard & Poor's. On May 18, 2012, we published an article titled, CLO Performance Remained Robust Amid Growing Speculative Grade Defaults. And joining me to discuss this article further is Jayashri Subramanian. Welcome, Jay. Thanks, Rob. So, Jay, what does the quarterly U.S. CLO Index Report provide to market participants? The Standard & Poor's Rating Services U.S. CLO Index provides aggregate performance statistics across its rated uh, CLO transactions, primarily backed by corporate loans. We have about 462 um, CLO transactions in the uh, cohorts right now. We provide this information to market participants so they can um, track the overall performance of CLO transactions as well as to benchmark any transactions that they specifically follow against the performance of the cohorts. And can you tell us a little more about how the data is organized and where the data is coming from? Sure. Uh, the performance information in the CLO indexes is primarily divided into six cohorts. Each cohort has a large majority of the transactions that we rated in that particular vintage year from 2003 to 2008. So essentially each cohort has a fixed number of US CLO transactions. Um, we collect the monthly performance information for the transactions within the uh, CLO indexes and the index just aggregates this data. So there's quite a bit of information that's available to you. What are some of the key things that we focus on to determine the overall performance of CLOs? So the index report itself highlights a number of key risk um, areas for CLO transactions, including the rating migrations within the underlying pools. We specifically focus on the defaulted assets, the triple C rated assets held, the senior and subordinate par coverage ratios, um, and the interest coverage ratios, and a few other key relevant parameters for this sector. So this particular report focuses on speculative grade defaults. Can you tell us a little more about what we're seeing with defaults and the triple C assets in the U.S. CLOs? Sure, Rob. Um, so the performance has strengthened in the first quarter for the U.S. CLOs. The defaulted assets have come down and the triple C rated buckets have reduced as well. It, during the first quarter, Standard & Poor's downgraded about 15 speculative grade obligors into the double C, SD, and D range, which we treat as defaulted for the index. Of these, only 11 had any presence at all in the US CLOs, and one of them, DEX1 Corporation, had a significant presence in about 220 CLOs. Um, the total dollar value of that exposure was 528 million, but that was only 0.24% of all corporate assets within the CLOs. Uh, the triple C rated uh, buckets, it's the same story. US, um, Standard & Poor's downgraded about nine obligors into the triple C range, and of these, again, only one had significant presence in the CLO transactions in the index. So as a result of this, uh, the defaulted assets and the triple C buckets have come down during the first quarter. And what are some of the other improvements that we've seen in the overall performance of the U.S. CLOs? There have been a number of other improvements as well. Um, like I mentioned, the defaulted um, assets held and the triple C buckets have come down. And as a result of that, the senior and the subordinate over collateralization ratios have improved uh, considerably in the first quarter. Um, another notable improvement is the weighted average spread within the underlying CLOs have gone up a lot. And that has pushed the interest coverage ratios up as well in the first quarter. So Jay, the OC ratios from the older vintage CLOs, for example, the 2003-2004 cohorts, as you can see on the chart, are much higher than those from the 2006 to 2007 cohorts. Can you explain why there would be such a difference in the cohorts? Sure, Rob. So the 2003-2004 cohorts have transactions um, that are primarily out of their reinvestment phase and they're amortizing. So the principal paydowns to the senior notes lead to large improvements in the over collateralization ratios. When you take the 2006 and 2007 cohorts, these are the largest in the index, they have transactions that are mostly still reinvesting. So the improvements that we see in the over collateralization ratios is mostly a result of credit quality improvement in the pools. Okay, great. Thank you, Jay. And thank you for tuning in to this segment of Credit Matters TV.